Hello everyone and welcome back to the Paulding Pulse. I believe this is our third episode and we thank you for joining in. Hope you're having as great a time viewing these and spending time with us as we are getting to spend time with you. And uh, can you believe it's already April? We're uh, you know just moving through this year. So let's dive in real quick and talk about some things that are going on in Paulden County. Uh, I'm gonna call this the tour of Paulding each month. So let's start with post number one and uh, we will talk about, uh, you're gonna find this great. Everybody loves highway projects because everybody hates traffic. So if you are familiar in post one with where Due West Road comes in to Highway 92, uh, this is coming in right now like a 45 degree angle. It's right uh, south of the red light there uh, where you come in off of Due West. That is going to change. The property has been purchased and bought. Surveying is undergoing. Utilities are going to be uh, relocated so that we can straighten this out. And the intersection will come in at a 90 degree angle on Highway 92. Uh, this is going to be much safer. There'll be a red light that will be put there. And I know all of the folks that your commute and your travels takes you up and down Highway 92 and Due West Road, you're going to find this to be a great addition in Paulding County in post one. Now let's move on to post number two. Uh, post number two, everyone knows that uh, that is where the new senior center is going. And we got some great news for that. And I know our, the, the folks that take advantage of the senior center, you're going to really appreciate this. Everyone had been telling you, hey, you're going to be in by July 1st, you're going to be in by July 1st. And guess what? You're going to be in by July 1st. Speaking of that, we did an interview and got to spend some time with Jeremiah Fields, our property management uh, director here in the county. And let's cut to him and let's just see what he had to tell us about the Paulding Senior Center. How you doing, Jeremiah? Hey, John. Doing good. How about you? Doing great. It's good to be with you today. Yes, sir. Glad uh, to be here. Well, th thank you for taking time to, you know, out of your schedule. I know yes, you, uh, you are one busy individual <laughs> for the county. So uh, you are the property management yes, sir. manager, correct? Property management director for okay. Paulding County. Yes, sir. All right. Tell a little bit about that job. What, what is that? What's the responsibilities? What do you do exactly? So we have several employees that do maintenance for the county, you know, anything from painting a wall, fixing a door, toilet stopped up, and we kind of manage all of those, all of those work orders that come in, and all of the vertical construction that is coming in the county. We got a lot of good projects coming that the good taxpayers of Paulding County is helping us out with that have really been needed for a long time in the county. Well, you talking about the uh, new projects and the vertical projects, Tell us about this venue. Uh, this is exciting. It is, yes sir. So it's the old Oasis Church, close to 61 and 278, back behind Chattahoochee Tech. The county bought the property last year and we're in the middle of remodeling it, turning it into the new senior center and event center and parks and rec administrative offices will also be housed here. So it's a great facility, great building, great asset for the county. So the seniors, now they will not be in this building where you and I are sitting right now. No, sir, there's another building on this property and that will be the new senior center. They'll have full access to that building. Everything that they do on a daily basis will be housed in that building. Let's talk about this room. Oh yeah, this is it's gonna be <laughs> nice right here. This is exciting. What, yes, sir. What do you see happening here? Uh, my vision, it, you could have a wedding, concert, uh, a, a prom, you know, it, the options are endless. You could seat 1,200 people, huge stage. It's gonna be a great place for the county. Now, you know, I love to eat and everyone knows that. So I was told that you can put tables and chairs in here and get 700 people roughly. Yes, sir. Is that That's right? right? Yes, sir. So we could have a dinner theater setting. Yes, that, sir. So a lot, a lot of potential. There is a lot it. of potential. That is awesome. A lot, a lot of great things going. I'm excited about this place. Right yes, here. sir. I Me really too. am. I, I can see, I just see great potential. And yeah. this is just going to be one of those, just those hidden gems here in yes, Paulding sir. County. Um, tell us about some future projects. What else you got coming up? Well, we're actually working on some bathroom remodels also. So at the Playground of Dreams, a lot of people have probably seen that's been closed and we're getting closer to having that completed. The outside has been completely tore out. 
new siding on the outside. The bathrooms are getting remodeled right now. It was actually out there this morning. So they're putting the interior walls up and polish the floor. And then next we're gonna move to the bathrooms up on the hill at Brawley, up there by those soccer fields, get those remodeled. So we have a lot of projects coming up. So another project that I'm pretty excited about is the Mount Tabor Park area over there. We have a 9-11 monument, or had. You know, I've been working on getting it moved actually to Veterans Park at the administration courthouse building right there at the park. We already have a military monument there. And we're gonna move that 9-11 monument to Mount Tabor Park. And that's a huge accomplishment, I feel like, when we get that moved, because it means a lot to a lot of people. It does, and now that's going to sit at Veterans Memorial, and it'll be on the west side the of west the pavilion there yes, where the, the existing uh, monument is at. Yes, sir, yep. That will be it awesome. Close. It will be, yes, sir. Because with all of the volume of the walkers that we have and the visitors to that park, mm -hmm. uh, they'll they'll really, they'll appreciate it and be able to enjoy that. That is, that yes, is sir. great. Yes, sir, yep. Um, Jeremiah, that is a lot going on. I know a lot of folks are going to say, well, you touched on this in previous episodes, but you know, it's great to talk to the person, the individual that's in charge yes, of these projects and to well, be able to get that time frame and what's been involved. And, you know, your role is new here in yes, the sir. county. I mean, it's, you know, it didn't exist a year ago. Right. And I think folks can see that with all of these projects that you talked about and everything that you got going on, uh, it, it was a long time coming. It was much needed. And uh, yes, sir. I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule today. Mike. Thank you, John. Good to see you. You too. Now let's move on to post number three. You're going to find this one really interesting. I did. On Bill Carruth Parkway, where in between the intersections of ba uh, Vergy Ballantine, all the way down to Rosedale Drive, there is an initiative going on that is known as CV1K. That is Connected Vehicle First Technology. What this is going to do is the later model vehicles uh, that have what is known as CV2X, that's Connected Vehicle to Anything, uh, Waze, Google Maps, it will be able to alert you to what the status is of those red lights going up and down Bill Carruth Parkway. Uh, if there is a pedestrian that has hit the button that they're wanting to cross at one of these intersections, you're going to be given a heads up, so it will help your commute. But here's the greatest part about this. That is the road that leads down to Wellstar Pauling Hospital. Emergency vehicles will have the capability that they will be able, in the event of an emergency, to turn those red lights green so that they are not having to slow down to pass through an intersection that has a red light for them. So they will actually have some control of that. So uh, be looking out for CV1K technology on Bill Carruth Parkway. I mean, this is great news, folks. And you know, this is nationwide and Paulin County is on the leading edge, the cutting edge of this. So we are excited about that. And then finally, on our tour of Pauling, let's go to post number four. In post number four, uh, if you're familiar with where Harmony Grove Church Road comes into Cedarcrest Road, right now that intersection is where Harmony Grove Church Road ends. Uh, the property has been purchased, the grading is beginning, they're clearing the timber. Uh, that extension is going to cross Cedarcrest Road and this extension will go down to the new middle school that will be open on August the 1st of this year, 2024. So this road will be, uh, it will be completed before opening day of school. And I know that all of the folks that you, your commute takes you up and down Cedarcrest Road, our residents that live there on, on that north corridor, you're gonna really, really appreciate that. While we are talking about Post 4, we recently got to spend some time with our fire chief, Joey Pelfrey, and uh, he's got something else to share with you about Post 4 that you're going to find very interesting. So let's just cut to him and see what he's got to share. Hi right, folks, we are here today with Paulin County Fire Chief Joey Pelfrey. We are at Station 11. Uh, Crossroads Community located at Harmony Grove Church Road. We want to uh, we just want to spend some time with Joey and let him share some things that's happening in Paulden County. Uh, share a little bit about him. Uh, a lot of folks probably don't don't know him personally, but we're gonna we're gonna change that today. So uh, Joey, how are you? Doing great, thanks, John. Good, good. Uh, like I said, we want we want to make uh, folks aware of who you are. So tell us a little bit about. 
Who is Joey Pelfrey? Joey Pelfrey. Well, I moved here, uh, me and my wife moved here in 1991 to Burnt Hickory. We've lived here ever since, fell in love with the county. Uh, I was in construction work, uh, started volunteering as a firefighter. Uh, just enjoyed doing that, enjoyed meeting people and, and got to know the community and the bug hit me to be a firefighter. And so in 1996, I became a paid firefighter here in Paulding County. Now, being a native Paulding County and myself, I remember those days with the Volunteer Fire Department. And uh, all of us, we were very thankful when, you know, we had a full-time paid fire department. So you were one of the first. Yeah, you know, even today we say that the volunteer firefighters were the anchor of the fire department. They, uh, they did this for free and they did it on their own. They had fish fries to raise money to buy equipment for the fire truck. So it's, uh, they put a lot their heart and soul into it. And so when it became paid, uh, it uh, was a testament to them of everything they had accomplished and got us rolling as a fire department. And we became a uh, paid fire department in 1996 and started to grow from there. So you've been here since day one? Uh, well, yes and no. We did hire three firefighters in 1995. Uh, I was number eight hired. Okay. So uh, I have been here and I've seen all the changes. I've had the uh, honor of seeing that change and see where we're at. We, you know, we started with eight firefighters then and we're all the way up to over 200 firefighters. You have over 200? We have over 200 paid firefighters now. Uh, when I say that, that includes in our inspection division, we have a training division, we have an EMS division. So we got a lot of divisions out there, but uh, you gotta have those in order to run a fire department efficiently. Zach, exactly. how long have you been chief? Uh, I've been chief since 2014, about 10 years. Uh, I was deputy chief uh, in 2003 when Chief Earwood was here and, and worked with him till, uh, under his leadership until 2014. Uh, he mentored me and then I was able to uh, get the chief's position and it was an honor to get it and still here tickling right along. We're thankful to have you. You're talking about the change. I mean, you know, Paulding County now, last census, we were, what, 170,000 people. Um, what would you say has been one of the, the major changes? I mean, I know growth, yes, but how has, how has the fire department had to change on the fly, adapt, you know? We have had to adapt with the increasing population. Uh, you know, I was looking back in 2000, we only ran about 6,000 calls a year. And now we're close to 20,000 calls a year we're running. 80% of those are EMS or rescue calls. And that's probably been, to me, one of the most significant changes that we've made in the fire service is going to what we call an advanced life support unit. And we were able to do that uh, in 2022. We got our first two ALS units. And advanced life support is basically handling calls such as chest pains, uh, cardiac arrest, uh, respiratory distress, strokes, seizures, uh, those, those calls that need immediate help in the pre-hospital setting. And so we're able to do that. We have staffed uh, our, all of our ALS units with licensed paramedics. And the paramedics are able to run these calls and give that uh, care they need to give to these patients out in the field. Uh, when COVID hit in 2020, uh, everything started getting a lot busier. People were calling 911 more. They were sick. They were scared. And uh, the ambulance service got inundated with calls. So we saw that we needed to step up and accelerate our program. And we've done that. So now we're running three ALS units to be able to respond to these calls. So we have three ALS units. I see one of the trucks right here behind you. Uh, so we've got Station 11. Where are the other two located? Uh, the other ones, we have one at Station 4, which is in the Union committee, uh, Community. And we also have one Station 9, which is uh, on the south end of the county. So we've got them kind of in a triangle. And uh, we, we intend on increasing that and, and adding more ALS trucks as things go. Wow. So uh, do you think will every station eventually be equipped with an ALS unit? Is that the plan? Yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. We've seen uh, a lot of success with this. We, uh, When we first commissioned our first two ALS trucks, uh, we ran about 1,400 calls from that time, and we have seen a success rate that's unbelievable. And uh, so it's, it's something that's uh, near and dear to us now that we're going to keep trying to improve upon uh, where the citizens can uh, get the service they uh, need and deserve. Well, and typically you guys, you arrive on the scene, not always, but most of the time prior to the to the ambulance getting there. So 
if I understand, you're able now to administer the same care that they would get, you know, if the ambulance was already on site. Yes, that's correct. Uh, with us being uh, strategically located all over the county with 13 fire stations, we are able to get there before the ambulance at times. And a lot of times the ambulance gets so many calls that there might be a small delay in their response. So we are able to get the ALS trucks there. And we have advanced tools, advanced drugs and protocols to be able to uh, get render aid to the patients before the ambulance gets there. We can do mostly everything the ambulance can except transport. Wow, that, that, you know, that's reassuring. You know, like I say, being a native Paulding County, and man, talk about the changes that we've seen since those volunteer days. Uh, based on that, what do you see for the future of the, the fire department in Paulding County? Well, you know, me and you were just talking about how the population is going to continue to increase here in Paulding County, which if that happens, of course, we're going to have to increase our services, which means more personnel and more fire stations. Uh, and so that's something we look at. We look at all the data and just uh, look at it to see where we can place fire stations and when there's a need for it. Uh, luckily, we have the SPLUS that the citizens voted in and we're able to build fire stations and buy fire trucks with that equipment we need to be able to be successful in that. You talking about new fire stations. We have a new fire station that will soon be under construction. Tell us a little bit about that. We do. We have one on Old Cartersville Road. Uh, we've got an area out there that we needed coverage in with an increase in calls, and it's really growing in that area. So it's on Old Cartersville Road. Uh, we'll be opening the bids on March the 1st, and we hope to have that station built and ready to uh, move into in December of this year. So December of 24 we should have that'll be fire station number that will be it's going to be called fire station number 13 but it will be a total of 14 stations. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that story I mean I know people's gonna wonder well how is fire station 13 the 14th station so I thought that very uh, very humorous so tell us. It, uh, we were building fire stations when Chief Earwood was here and uh, we come up with us, uh, the next station was gonna be in the area around the airport. And we were looking and, uh, at what we were gonna do and then we come up and said, well, the next station's gonna be number 13. And Chief Earwood said, we're not gonna have a fire station 13. Uh, I'm not superstitious. So, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put station 13 in there and uh, we're gonna go from there. So number 13 will be Pauline County's 14th fire station. I love that. Yep, I love that. Easy to keep count of. That's right. So, uh, so a lot going on in Paulden County. You've seen a lot of changes, and no doubt those changes are going to continue. We don't see that going away anytime soon. Um, you know, I, I thank you today for just taking the time. One thing I would like to ask you to share, I know you guys, you do a lot of community involvement and engagement outside of your responsibility of what we typically think about. You're part of the Touch a Truck. You just recently did an event. Uh, I want to be a fireman, and the children came. Tell us just a, just real quick about those things. Sure, we have a you know we do have a fire safety division that we have to have because education is one of the most important things uh, with fire safety, especially with our children. And we want to connect with those children and make sure that they understand what they need to do in the event of emergencies. So we you know we go to the schools. There's over 11,000 kids that we have to uh, teach every year in the first grade and the kindergarten program. We do that. We let them come out and, and see our fire dog and uh, Sparky, as we call him, <laughs> come out and see Sparky. But education's uh, very key to us and getting out there, public relations and getting letting everybody know that we're here to help in anything they need. Uh, we respond to a different array of calls every year and it always gives us a chance to uh, educate them on what they need to do in the event of emergency. I think it's uh, it can be said that not only do you keep us safe, you educate our youth, and uh, you help us be able to sleep good at night. You know, knowing that there's a, knowing that there's help in the event that we need just right around the corner. That's reassuring. Well, John, I want to take this opportunity as well to talk about my personnel, <clears throat> if I can, before we go. I, I've got some of the best personnel in the state of Georgia. I put them up against anybody. Uh, we always say that. Uh, they're well trained, they care about their job. There's many of them that work here that were volunteers and used to do this for free. And uh, you know, I, I feel like we've been very successful as a fire department and me as a fire chief, I feel like I have been, but the only reason I have been is because I've surrounded my people with the, uh, the will to do this. And it's just amazing the attitudes that we have here uh, with our personnel and, and the job they do every day. They're committed to it. They genuinely care about the community and um, 
I couldn't be successful without them. You know, in any business, we know it's private, government, state, whatever. Uh, you have to surround yourself with good people to be successful. And uh, we've, we've done that here. And, and I'm just proud of all of our men and women that work here. Well, we're very proud of all of you, all the work you do, the sacrifice that you make. And, uh, and I appreciate you taking the time today to just share a little bit about who Joey Pelfrey is, where the passion comes from, and uh, the dedication. And uh, we, we thank you for that. Wish you well. Wish all your men and women well. And uh, thank you for what you do each and every day. Thank you for having me. And folks, that brings us to the close of this Paulding Pulse. And I know that, I hope that you found, and I know you did, that you found this as exciting as I did. And uh, it's just great things happening in Paulding County. The year is moving rapidly, but hey, so are we. We thank you for tuning in. Please share this with all of your friends and family and neighbors. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, meet us next month as we come back and we will meet you at the Pulse of the Action in Paulding County.